Good morning, O'Neill. I hope everyone's having a fabulous day today, even though we had to spring forward an hour. So even though it's nine o'clock or it, it is, it feels like it's 10 o'clock. So make sure you have your breakfast in the morning to keep your energy up. And because it's a wacky week. So uh, those of us who are come to school in person, um, kindergarten through third grade, you are here in the building on Monday and Tuesday. And our fourth through sixth grade, you are here in the building on Wednesday and Thursday. Whew. Because Friday we have a teacher institute day. As you know, teachers are lifelong learners. And so we need to keep learning as well. So that's what we're going to be doing on Friday during your day off. Well, as you know, this month is still uh, Women's History Month, and I have a really cool book for you um, about math and how math can be cool and exciting and amazing for all people, but how sometimes women were told math and science just isn't their thing, but it totally is. And um, this past Sunday, I believe, was uh, Pi Day, so 314, which is um, the first three digits in um, Pi. Um, and so with, in honor of Pi Day and Women's History Month, I'd like to read to you a computer called Catherine. It's how Katherine Johnson helped put America on the moon. So here we go. All right. Everywhere she went, Katherine counted. She counted her steps to church. She counted the plates on the dinner table. She even tried counting the stars in the sky. Most important of all, Catherine counted the days until she could start school. Finally, at age five, she followed her brother hundreds of steps to a two room schoolhouse. An excellent student, Catherine devoted or devoured thick books and adding numbers at the speed of light. So the teacher decided she could skip first grade and start second grade. But Catherine was such a fast learner, she later skipped fifth grade too. And before you could say mathematician magician, she was a grade ahead of her older brother. Oh, wow. Catherine loved math because it was easy to see if an answer was right or wrong. Meanwhile, most everyone in town was arguing about right and wrong. Some people said it was wrong for children with different skin colors to attend the same school. Others said it wasn't right for women to work at the same jobs as men. Their arguments seemed wrong to Catherine, as wrong as five plus five is 12. She believed everyone should be treated the same. So she kept working hard in school and dreamed of a future where all people would have equal rights. Catherine finished eighth grade when she was only 10 years old but her town didn't have a high school for black students. Determined to keep learning, she counted the dusty miles, 120 in all, as her family moved closer to a school she could attend. There she took an exciting math class called geometry. She learned how points and lines made shapes, triangles, trapezoids, and perfect parallel parallelograms, and her love for math grew exponentially. 
At 15, Catherine started college. She flew through every math class at West Virginia State. So a professor taught harder classes just for her. In advanced geometry, she plotted points on a graph. When she connected the points, she created a beautiful U-shaped curve called a parabola. It was love at first sight. After graduation, Catherine became a math teacher. Back then, people said women could only be teachers or nurses. Catherine knew that was wrong. Nothing wrong with being a teacher or nurse, but if you want more, go for it. It was wrong as 10 minus five is three. She believed women could be anything, scientists, lawyers, or even mathematicians. So she set out to prove it. Catherine discovered a research center in Virginia that was hiring women mathematicians. They were called computers because they made calculations that helped the men engineers design airplanes and flight plans. To Catherine, it added up to her perfect job. Get it? Added up. All day long, she punched buttons on a calculator, just like the other women. She solved long math equations, just like the other women. She wrote answers on a huge data sheet, just like the other women. Bunch of smart ladies, I tell you. But Catherine wasn't like the other women. She asked questions, my kind of gal. Lots of questions. What were her calculations used for? Why were they important? How did aunt her answers help design airplanes and flights? The men engineers noticed the women who asked intelligent questions and how quickly she solved difficult math problems. So they asked Catherine to join their space team. Its mission, send America's first astronaut into space. Catherine said yes. Then she discovered that women weren't allowed to attend the group's meetings. She knew this was wrong, as wrong as five times five is 20. So she asked if she could go. Women don't ever go to those, the engineers replied. Is there a law against it? Catherine asked. Uh, no, <laughs> said the engineers. So Catherine showed up at the next meeting ready for work. Astounded by her geometry skills, the team asked her to calculate when America's first space flight should blast off. Catherine agreed. But first she asked questions like, where should the rocket splash down? How high should it fly? When should it land? With that information, Catherine carefully computed the rocket's flight path, a beautiful U-shaped curve. Next, she worked backward to figure out the time it should blast off. Then she began counting the days until the launch. On May 5th, 1961, Alan Shepard blasted off. Following Catherine's flight path, he soared into the silvery sky. 15 minutes later, he splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean, right on schedule and right on target. Soon, Americans began dreaming of a longer flight around the entire Earth to figure out the math for this long, complicated trip Engineers decided to use their own, their new room-sized computer that worked much faster than people. But astronaut John Glenn trusted Catherine more than a machine. He wouldn't step one foot into the rocket until she said the computer's calculations were correct. Happy to help, Catherine checked every number. 
On February 20th, 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. Then people began wondering if an astronaut could travel all the way to the moon. Both the Soviet Union and the United States wanted to be the first to land there and win the space race. Catherine knew this flight was incredibly long and dangerous. Every calculation would have to be perfect. One math mistake and the rocket would zoom right past the moon. A NASA computer hummed and computed a flight path to the moon and back. Catherine went to work too double checking the machine's calculations, but this was the most complicated geometry problem she'd ever seen. One of the points, the spacecraft was flying incredibly fast. Her target, the moon, was consistently circling the Earth while spinning. Some people thought the problem was too difficult to solve, but Catherine knew that was wrong. As wrong as 25 divided by five is four. She calculated and computed. She plotted and planned. She created a bold, brave path all the way to the moon and back. <sighs> 10, nine, ignition sequence starts, heart racing. Catherine leaned close to the small television screen. Seven, six, five. She held her breath as the powerful flames exploded on the launch pad. Four, three, two, one, lift off. The rumbling rocket slowly rose above the ground, above the smoke, above the clouds, and then disappeared into the ink black space. Four days later, Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the moon. Catherine smiled and began to count. Girls are capable of doing everything men are capable of doing. If you want to know, ask a question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. And if you look there, that's Catherine, her real picture, and how she calculated the trip to the moon and all of that. Oh, and a timeline of everything. It's so very cool. And there you go. A computer called Catherine. And that's by Suzanne Slade. So ask questions. Think of really cool experiments. Don't be afraid of math. It's so exciting for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Catherine and knowing what it is to be brave and not backing down. So enjoy your wacky week and I hope you have a marvelous Monday.